Losing all hope was freedom. Loff. Andrew Hales created the Loft YouTube channel and became one of the original pranksters who exploded in 2012, with videos generating over 10 million views at a time where that was basically unheard of. He never really knew how to handle his life as a full-time YouTuber. The young entrepreneur was experiencing the great freedom of making a living on his own through the internet. As time went on and his channel wasn't sustainable, he slowly lost hope, vlogging his way from mainstream YouTube success to an Amazon factory worker, telling us the story of how Andrew Hales lost all hope and his freedom. Almost picking up chicks. The story begins with this video. I just wanted to say, um, if I would ask if you wanted to go on a date. In early 2012, something as simple as a 22-year-old guy approaching a girl but not being able to form a sentence was viral content on YouTube. With 2,634 subscribers, getting 60,000 views in two weeks was amazing. So he kept doing what was working, holding the door open for people that are far away, holding people's hands, asking people for a kiss. Within five months of uploading pranks, the Loft channel surpassed 100,000 subscribers and 12 million views. He was quickly becoming the biggest prank creator on the platform, and for a good reason. Andrew's pranks were harmless, simple, and in a weird way, relatable. The videos were beautiful because they sort of always went exactly the way you expected them, but every now and again, you had a crazy curveball. Someone would actually be happy to hold his hand or would actually want to kiss him. But what's a good video without a great host? Andrew was the perfect amount of awkward. Not too animated, not too boring. The people that he interacted with were the stars of the show. He never interrupted their reactions and seemed to consistently get into situations that almost everyone can relate to. On top of that, he was young, handsome, tall, and friendly, so he was able to interact with anyone. For the next two years, Andrew casually dominated the platform with these perfectly simple prank videos. With every upload doing at least 1 million views, guys wanted to be him and girls wanted to be with him. Well, not all girls. Can I have your number? I'm actually married. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay, bye. Sorry. Yeah, it's all right. Despite making tons of prank videos where he wasn't necessarily the center of attention, Andrew developed a diehard fan base, ones who seemed to genuinely care about him. He didn't really think highly of himself, though. We're really normal people. You get, I mean, you read all these comments, oh, you're a legend, you're a legend. Not yet. Not really. <laughs> Just got lucky. The thing that makes Andrew Hales so funny is that he always looks so bored, tired, and depressed. The thing that made him so funny and relatable is one of the reasons why his YouTube career started slipping away. And I don't, I wouldn't say I'm really depressed because it doesn't really hurt. I'm just really, yeah. I'm just kind of tired. In 2014, Andrew felt the pressure to start changing up his content, even though he didn't really have to yet. We're, yeah, we're kind of at a low point for Loft right now, this is as far as the views matching the subscriber counter, but I. I'm kind of hanging by a thread, I guess, if you will. He thought his channel was at a low point because he was getting half a million views with 1.6 million subscribers, which I must say are still great numbers for a two and a half year run. But maybe a slight indication that people think his videos are getting redundant. Before clicking on a loft video, you knew you were going to get Andrew on some random college campus, a bunch of awkward interactions between him and a pretty girl, him and a teacher, or him and a jock. It was a formula that was starting to only satisfy his core fan base, but not earn him new fans. Andrew just kept posting in order to feed the beast. He knew what videos were better than others, but he would post whatever he had finished to maintain his weekly upload schedule. The strategy can only last so long before people start skipping your videos. YouTube was changing a lot. Fake pranks were exploding on the platform, but they had a new name, social experiments. These videos were scripted and set up scenarios to push a narrative. Some of the most common were gold digger pranks, where a guy approaches a girl, but she doesn't want him, then he pulls up in a nice car, and all of a sudden she changes her mind. Or anything playing into a racist stereotype or a homeless person stereotype. Some of these videos getting tens of millions of views. Andrew, among many other creators, were making videos denouncing this type of content. It was hurting the viewership of creators who were making real prank videos. Well, at least that's what Andrew thought. The reality of YouTube is no matter what, you just have to focus on your own channel your own audience, and your own content. When you pay attention to others, you lose focus, become defensive. He gave these fake pranksters way too much attention, and it was starting to hurt his spirit. He had a couple of hits in 2015, including his biggest video ever, acting out the notebook with girls. But that still didn't make him happy. Andrew posted a day in the life video, which was an artistic way of telling his audience that he doesn't like doing pranks anymore, and he wanted to change. I, uh, for now, I really need to just take a break from 
uh, social experiments and pranks and work on some other stuff because I'm just really bored with them right now. He tried to continue this vlog series, but it didn't last. And he actually started his own fake prank series. He set up a bunch of ridiculous scenarios to mock the current YouTube trends. Shoulder checking people, picking up girls like a douchebag, selling Adderall to students as an undercover cop. Ironically, these parody videos ended up performing way better than his normal content, making him become the exact thing he wanted to destroy. It seems I don't really know what you guys want from me. Andrew was caught in a vicious cycle. Every time he started a new video idea, it wouldn't perform well and would get discouraged. So he would go back to doing pranks because they would get more views. But the prank video views got lower and lower because he wasn't evolving. Just the same old stuff. Plus, there was a new prankster in town. That was epic. Juan Gonzalez was the younger, taller, and more handsome version of Lof. His videos were very similar to Andrew's, but he had a little more game with girls and knew the perfect amount of awkwardness to lean into. I like you. Thank you, I yeah. have a boyfriend. Do you? Yeah, I do. Oh, that's so unfortunate. It is, I'm sorry. Andrew was overly awkward, which obviously is funnier, but YouTube viewers wanted the host to be less cumbersome and more confident. Is uh, that it? Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> he coasted through 2016, tried some skits, satisfied his core audience, which still loved and adored him, but I found this clip that really showed where his mindset was. He said, uh, people don't go to YouTube for important works of art, they go to YouTube for relationships. Basically insinuating that the quality of the content doesn't really matter because viewers are watching for the personality of the creator. In the face of this new mindset, Andrew started vlogging and was entering a stage of his career where viewers were not sure if they should feel bad for him or just embrace that his somber, depressing demeanor is his personality. He opened up about his nofap journey, his drug use, his depression, and his audience started to get to know who he really was behind the scenes, which they liked. I mean, the views were not enough to build a career on, but he was still getting 30 to 70,000 views per vlog. No more pranks. He finally did it. In 2017, Andrew gave them up for good. It seemed like he was finally ready to buckle down and commit to a new style of content. I'm gonna focus on quality sketches to put on the main channel. He was getting too old to mess with college students. He launched his Chatting With series and it performed okay. Almost all the initial interviewees were other popular YouTubers. Now his fans that loved his personality had a 15 to 25 minute long episode every week. But it had a tough time resonating with more people because if you don't already know Andrew and love him, it can be hard to sit through his melancholy and depressing tone for a half hour straight. He was very aware of this. Thanks for being here, Andrew. Yeah, of course, Andrew. <laughs> this is awkward, isn't it? A little bit, but we can get through it. So why don't you do pranks again? Um, I, well, I go through phases. I, I get bored of them and I get burnt out and I want to try new stuff, variety, and uh, I've been doing ch chatting with. Yeah, the chatting with are boring as shit, Andrew. Thanks. You can't just go from short and sweet to long and boring. And again displayed his insecurities on camera, so it was back to pranks. Well, only for about three months. Then it was back to self-deprecation. I have no talent, just awkward as shit. I'm Andrew Hales and I'm a little bitch. My work ethic is pathetic. Better upload something real quick. Monotone, ramen noodle hair freak. Habitual, pill popping junkie. No job, no degree, no money. And a ring to my audience like a pussy. Trying to make it come back, good luck. The prank fed is over, get Violently self aware. And this song is very funny to the commenters who casually pay attention, but it's actually kind of sad to watch someone who is so aware of their shortcomings but isn't doing enough to change them. You just kind of watch them repeat the same old patterns. You see, Andrew's mentality with creating content was always skewed. He knew what was quality and what wasn't, but for some reason, he lived by this mantra, just keep uploading. Quantity over quality. Comparing himself to Roman Atwood and Casey Neistat, who were very interesting and very entertaining individuals, they had quality and quantity. It's something you just can't keep up with. 90% of Andrew's vlogs were him trying to make a vlog. Him thinking, trying to figure out what to say or what to do for years, literally from the point where the most recent video is the same exact vlog from 2016 and 2017. A guy who still can't decide what to create or why to create. Maybe the diss track finally knocked some sense into him because he for real 100% quit pranks after that. From November 23rd, 2017 to March 31st, 2020, Andrew uploaded roughly two chatting with videos every month. Some of those videos performed really well, getting in the millions of views, which is very difficult for that format. Despite the famous adpocalypse, which made all YouTubers drop in revenue, sometimes by 90% in extreme cases, Andrew was comfortably making over 200,000 per year on YouTube. This was his second peak. He was a certified YouTube legend with 
with a pretty successful rebrand. All his friends were becoming very successful on the platform. Danny Duncan, Churdleys, Ryan the Leader, Ross Creations. He got too comfortable. He partied, took a lot of vacations, and forgot to pay taxes. His lifestyle was not sustainable with his work ethic. He took life one day at a time which can be better for your mental health, but you would think Andrew would try to be more prepared considering he already had one fall off before. It was when the pandemic hit, which everyone suffered, but Andrew took it a lot harder than others. What? He was going mad. His chatting with series became increasingly difficult to maintain. He was just throwing random content ideas out there. You're a line, staring up the road, pray to God I see headlights. It would get worse. In the beginning of 2021, Andrew made a confessional vlog about his serious $50,000 credit card debt. I'm just trying to be smart here and save money and get out of debt. Something that millions of Americans deal with. He made the grown-up decision of moving out of LA with his girlfriend to save some money and get out of this financial hole. The content during this time couldn't be more random, just throwing stuff at the wall to see if it sticks. He only had two content styles that people really loved, chatting with and pranks. So it's not like he could just keep uploading videos to make money. Again, it was almost impossible to ever tell how serious things were because he would just laugh it all off. You couldn't tell if you were looking at a depressed man who's losing all hope, or just a shy introverted man giving a little update video. This feels like some sort of art documentary about a lost soul trying to find himself again. Eventually, he admitted his life situation to everyone in his How I Became Broke video, which is where a lot of his old fans, including myself, were shocked to see him on the YouTube recommended, and realized, wow, I haven't thought of Andrew Hales in years. From there, he got some continuity back in his channel, giving life advice from the perspective of a guy who was kind of at the bottom and had nowhere to go but up. But this still wasn't enough for him, and on September 30th, he announced that he got a job at an Amazon warehouse. There's nothing wrong with working a normal job, but it's pretty rare to see someone go so backwards, from millions of views to pushing boxes around. But why? Why not just leverage your YouTube? Get a social media job? Just work super hard on content? Or I'll make, repurpose all my old videos for TikTok was, ugh, you know, like, ugh. You know, Amazon is so laid back and like chill, you know. He lost his drive. He wanted something simple. The simplicity of Amazon and working on a factory line sounded appealing. No worrying about clickbait, no reading comments, no influencer ego, just good old fashioned hard work. But two months later. Thank you so much for staying around. I quit Amazon. I can't, I'm never going back there. I think Andrew thought it was gonna be easy. He said later in this video that he'll get a job at a movie theater. It seems like he's approaching jobs as if he's a 65 year old retired man, but also says how his merch is selling well. It just leaves fans extremely confused. Why not just try this YouTube thing again? From here, he told us about his experiences as an Instacart driver making $22 in three hours. Then his experience as a DoorDash driver. These days, his content is more random than ever. A random mini documentary about narwhals, a 17 minute phone call with an insufferable fan, but still in the same predicament that he's been in for three or four years now. I think that's kind of what I'm, I'm gravitating towards is where you sit down and you just talk like PewDiePie. Well, like whatever, I don't know. I can't do the pranks anymore. It seems as if Andrew idolizes YouTubers and jobs that appear to be simple, ones that don't require much work or effort. He's hanging on to his audience by a thread, but there are definitely still a few thousand people that really ride for him. He opened up way too much about his life and his personality to not have a diehard fan base. People can relate to Andrew. He has 2.3 million subscribers, but feels like just another person you'd like to hang around. These people want to support him. They want to see him succeed. He's too real, too funny and has way too much potential to be this complacent, but he needs to commit to something soon because losing hope in himself is starting to make his fan base lose hope in him.